All right, this is going to be L'Hopital's rule, um, specifically the cases where you have a base to an exponent, but it's still an indeterminate form. Uh, the technique used on pretty much all of those cases is the same, um, so that's why we're going to group them together. So the limit as x approaches 0 of the quantity 1 plus sine of x to the 1 over x. Uh, the base there will approach 1, right, because you have 1 plus the sine of 0, which is 1. And then the uh, exponent is, if you're approaching 0 from the right, let's say, uh, the exponent is approaching infinity. Uh, so we have 1 to the infinity, it's indeterminate, that's not clearly defined, so what we do is this. Uh, you take the thing that you're taking the uh, limit of, and we let it equal y. So I'm going to let y equal that. And then the reason I'm doing that is so that I can actually take the natural log of both sides of this equation. So I'll do that. That's not obvious at first what we're doing, but uh, I'm taking the natural log of both sides. And that means that if I want to take the limit of the left-hand side of this equation, it's going to be equal to the limit of the right-hand side of this equation. So we have this. All right, so continuing from there, uh, we're going to remember that part, right? So that's the left-hand side. And we're going to work on the right-hand side. So on the next slide, I'm going to start working on that. All right, so here's what I'm going to work on. And... What I'm going to do is use the property of natural logs to bring the exponent down. Remember, exponents become coefficients. And then I can rewrite that a little bit. Like that. And now if I take the limit, um, I get the natural log of 1, which is 0. And then x is approaching 0, so x approaches 0. So I have 0 over 0. Now I have a L'Hopital situation. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule on it. So the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the top is 1 over u, and then the derivative of u. And then the derivative of the bottom is just 1, which is nice. So let me rewrite that a little bit so it's more obvious what's happening. And now if I take the limit, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. So I'm putting that in this box. This is the same color as the box on the previous screen. Uh, because what I want to do now is go back to uh, the two boxes that I had. So uh, this is the first thing I put in a box, and then that was the left-hand side, and then I worked on the right-hand side until I got to the point where I had 1. So those two things are equal. Um, a property of continuous functions is that you can move a limit uh, through them, so I'm going to move the limit inside of the natural log to get that. So that's equal to 1, and then exponentiate both sides. So I get this equals, now I'm exponentiating, so the right-hand side becomes e to the 1, which is just e. And then I know that y was the thing that I originally started with. And it must be equal to the e that I found. So that's how I do that one. Uh, I'm going to do one more example for you, which actually prior to doing it, I thought was going to be easy, but it turns out to uh, have a lot of steps. So uh, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of sine of x over 3 over natural log of x. So in this case, you're seeing the um, from the right part because of the natural log, the domain. So sine still approaches 0, and then you have a 3 over kind of negative infinity because natural log approaches negative infinity as you approach 0 from the right. Um, so 3 over infinity is, or negative infinity is just 0. So 0 to the 0, not clearly defined. We let y equal the thing that we start with. Uh, from there, we take the natural log of both sides to get this. Um, and then I brought the exponent down at the same time. Um, and now I'm going to rearrange a little bit that. So I have that. So 3 natural log of sine of x over the natural log of x. So what I want to do is take the limit of kind of both sides there. So the number one thing that people forget is that they're taking the limit of the natural log. So when you get your final answer, you have to exponentiate it. Don't forget that part. Um, so use L'Hopital's rule. So it's 1 over u du, and then over, and then 1 over x. Um, so this we can uh, simplify a little bit. So I'm going to pull the 3 out. I'm going to break it into two different things. So uh, 1 over sine of x over 1 over x is x over sine of x. And then I'm going to multiply by this limit. So remember, you're allowed to do this provided that both limits that you find exist. And usually the only way you know if they exist is to do it first and see how it works out. 
Um, so I've divided it up like this. So 3 is obviously 3. I'm um, going to rewrite this limit. You might actually have this memorized. It's one of the first trig limits that you run into. Um, and then as x approaches 0, cosine approaches 1. So really I just have 3 times this limit. It's a L'Hopital situation, right? Because we have 0 over 0. So 3 times the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of derivative of the top is 1, derivative of the bottom is cosine. And then we know that cosine approaches 1, so 3 times 1, which is 3. And I put a box around the two things we now need to equate. So we have the limit of the natural log equals the 3 that we found. So I'll move the limit inside the natural log again. And it equals 3. Exponentiate. And on this side I'll have e cubed. And then usually you want to go back to your original thing that you were dealing with. All right, so that's the technique. The basic technique is when you have a, a base to an exponent and it's an indeterminate form, uh, you want to take the natural log of the function you're taking the limit of, work it all out, and then exponentiate your answer. But I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.